Uh, well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. I know it's a little chilly, so I'll try to keep it brief. But uh, this is an exciting day and a, and, and a long time coming. Um, for several years now, uh, gosh, going on six or seven years now, probably, Richie? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. We, have been, we have been working to bring into uh, reality uh, a, a, a very special thing, which is a commemorative uh, congressional coin honoring the Purple Heart Hall of Honor and 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 through an organization uh, called the uh, the Honor Mission uh, provide resources for that institution as as a way to reinforce and and support uh, the memory and and the and the legacy of all those who have been awarded the Purple Heart. This is this is the award you don't want to get um, when you serve in our uh, in our in our in our military when you're a soldier or a sailor or an airman a marine, a guardian. Um, and we are blessed in the Hudson Valley with so many people who have served our country and uh, along with that, many who have distinguished themselves. Um, we lost uh, a great friend of this effort recently, um, Rich Rago, yes. who, who, who died too young, but who threw his heart and soul in this effort. And we're thinking of him now and his family because this would have thrilled him to be here with us today. Uh, and others like Stephanie Keegan, who have been knocking on doors and banging on, uh, you know, U.S. senators and, and members of Congress to get this done. We had to get more than 290 co-sponsors in the House uh, to get this done. You can't get 290 sponsors for free beer in the House of Representatives. <laughs> it is impossible. That is that is 80 more than 72 more than a majority of the House. So you, it has to be a robustly bipartisan effort, and this has been really thrilled to have the support of so many veterans organizations uh, who really, you know, were right there communicating with their members, helping us get that support. And we did. It took several years to do it. And, and just so people know, the United States Congress doesn't just hand these out. This is something we only do, I believe, to a Congress. And so it, you, you only get two every two years. And it's a, it, there's a tremendous competition to get it because it is one of the few ways that we can actually direct resources to a specific project that, that is meritorious. And so the way it works is we, we, we're going to mint a bunch of coins. Uh, they will be uh, collector's items, and we encourage everybody to scoop them up because it's going to be it's going to be fantastic. And I was particularly thrilled that we could produce these coins here in the Hudson Valley at the West Point Mint. And Jay Jaffe is here, who, who may have introduced me. There he is right there from West Point Mint, who has, I think, introduced me to the West Point Mint, brought me over there when I was uh, a, a brand new member of Congress. Um, and and right from the start, when, we, when we, we got this project going, I said, I got to do it there. And we are going to do the, uh, what are we going to do there, Jay? We're going to do the, uh, the silver and gold. The silver and gold are going to be done right here at West Point. So it's pretty cool. So in addition to having it commemorate the, the Purple Heart, it will be, it will be minted here just a few miles away from where the battle occurred that led to the creation of the Purple Heart by Washington, uh, which was called the Badge of Military Merit. Um, and I believe following that, the battle at Stony Point during the Revolutionary War. But the first Purple Hearts, uh, Badges of Military Merit, were awarded uh, just a few miles from where the Mint is uh, by Washington. Um, and so from that moment until today, it has been one of the most sacred uh, honors that, that a member of our military um, earns uh, but it is it's a very unhappy thing in many in many instances in, in in all instances and and so it's with some sobriety and some and some solemnity that we 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 approach this project because we wanted it to capture both how much we honor uh those who've been awarded the purple heart but also their sacrifice and the sacrifice of their families which is part of that and so that's why i'm so glad to be uh joined by by richie lay who is himself uh, a Vietnam veteran and a, an awardee of the Purple Heart, and who, like so many others, um, you know, put his life on the line for for the sake of our freedom, for the sake of our country. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna yield to him to speak. But before we do that, I think we're going to share with you the first of three uh, designs. But let me also say thank you to um, uh, Lieutenant Eddie Meeks, uh, Edie Meeks, excuse me, who's the board secretary of the Purple Heart Honor Mission, who's a combat nurse and uh, who was insistent that this award and these coins reflect that service, and I'm glad you did. And, and so, so, you know, it's not just, it's not just uh, one image of, of one awardee that you might have, but a, a, whole, a whole 
A whole group of Americans who reflect the full range of our diversity um, have been awarded this honor, and it is their memory that we, that we, and their service that we honor with the Purple Heart Hall of Honor, and that's the point. So glad you're here, uh, Edie, and and of course, um, I've got a bunch of folks from my. Let me just name them real quick from my Service Academy Review Board. They're actually here today at, at Castle Point. Um, identifying the next generation of military officers uh, who will attend the service academies, and I thank them for that. But I'm joined by uh, ret retired Major General Glenn Lesniak, who's uh, has been such a great help to me. Where are you, Glenn? Uh, thank you for all you've done, Glenn. Um, uh, Andy Hidalgo, Peggy Kent, um, uh, Bo Pendergraf, uh, Shara Abraham, Lou Liotti, uh, Jeff Lewis, Debbie uh, Adelin, Joe Colombo, uh, Glenn Goldman, Jay Jaffe, who I mentioned, uh, Bob Anderson, Robert Anderson, and um, Bob Phillips. Also, uh, James uh, Maxwell, and and I, and I mentioned Richie Lay. I think I got everybody. If you're if you're going home mad, let me know because <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. And, and we're joined by we're, we're joined by a friend here from Castle Point as well. Thank you, sir, for being here. You just told me there's a, a vet turning 100, and we're going to get him a letter to to wish him happy birthday, uh, Dante, uh, who I've met many times. But but look, let me um, let me tell you what we're going to do. So we've got three designs now. We've moved the process along. Um, it's hard for me to believe this is real, but we have now three designs that we want to unveil today. Uh, Richie and I are going to unveil the first one, and then we're going to ask uh, Eddie and uh, Edie and Stephanie to um, to do the other two. Um, and we want to do that now. Is that right? Right. So, and then what I'll do is I'll I'll get out of the way, and we'll let um, we'll let uh, Rich say a few words. But I'm thrilled to do this. So this is the first of our three designs. Ready? Ready? It's gone here. It goes towards oh, the back. back. All right, ready? ready? One, two, three. Whoa! Ooh. Fantastic. Come on over, sir. Today is truly a historic day, and what a great place for us to unveil these coins. These coins are befitting Purple Heart recipients. They were done out of love, they were done out of care, and they were done out of dedication to honoring all those who received the Purple Heart. For every Purple Heart that's issued, there's a team that's involved in that. The corpsman and the medic who treats the wounded in the field, the medevac chopper who takes them out, but then comes the nurses and the doctors who stabilize us and put us back together. And finally, the chaplain or the priest who says, don't worry about it, kid, you're gonna be okay. And then they leave the battlefield, normally back to the States, for, to be put back together again. The families, the brothers and sisters, the sons and daughters, the aunts and uncles, and all those part of that family stand behind each Purple Heart that's, re that's received. Two ladies I'd like to thank, Stephanie Keegan, our general who took us down after six years, mobilized us into teams, and walked us in like a true military mission, combat mission, to each person who did not sign that petition. Edie happened to be one of them. And when you walk in, she may not look big, but she's a giant in our eyes. These are magnificently done. They tell the story of the Purple Heart, as the Congressman said, from the inception, when it was the badge of military merit, to its reissuance in 1932, here at in New Windsor. They depict the badge, the Purple Heart, but as you'll see, the combat nurses and those who have passed on their families. We did it with love, we did it with attention. We ha have to thank the artists who did this and the people at the Mint. But there's one person and one person only and he's standing in back of me because without his perseverance, without his continued drive, it was defeated twice 
And he got back up. He said, we're going to make it happen again. And we did it. And we did it because of his tenacity. So now, Congressman Bulldog Maloney, <laughs> we all thank you. The truth is, of all the people up here, I probably did the least, but I, I appreciate that. It's often true with a lot of things members of Congress take credit for. It's my staff right there and in Washington, Bev Hart, who, who I know you all worked with, and others who really made this a labor of love. But um, I think we're ready for our second unveiling, and I think we're going to ask uh, Edie and Jay to do it. That's beautiful. Wow. Can I, can I embarrass you properly? So, um, <laughs> she didn't know it was going to come with an introduction. Uh, this is Edie Meeks, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't met Edie, she is, uh, she's amazing. And the minute you meet her, you know that uh, you, you feel her passion and her commitment. But what you might not realize, if you met her at the supermarket, that um, she joined the Army Nurses Corps, was commissioned a second lieutenant, uh, did her basic training at Fort Sam Houston in Texas, uh, and after working at Fort Ord in California, volunteered to go to Vietnam. And from July 1968 to 1969, she was working at, a, at an Army uh, field hospital in Saigon in the intensive care recovery unit. And from January 1969 to July of that year, she was stationed at the 71st Evacuation Hospital in Pleiku in the Central Highlands of Vietnam uh, and worked in the intensive care recovery and then in the medical unit, treating soldiers suffering from malaria, fevers, other illnesses, um, and after coming back from Vietnam, she worked at Madigan Army uh, Medical Center, Fort Lewis McCord, and has a, had a long and amazing career as a nurse as well, uh, including in my hometown of Cold Spring, New York. Um, so I love this person. And uh, if you just think about what I just told you, uh, that's, some pretty, that's some pretty serious service. And so we thank you, Edie, for all you've done. And it continues to go here. Oh, you haven't you. Yeah. you, get you. <laughs> just. Thanks. And look, the sun came out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I may be short, but... <laughs> uh, these coins, to me, we worked very hard for it. And everybody has. It's just been an amazing kind of thing to go to Washington and walk in these people's offices and say, wait a second, <laughs> wait a second, listen to us. For me, when Richie asked me to join this group, I said, okay, but at that time we were getting, doing a lot for the Vietnam Women's Memorial, of which I was on the board. And so I stayed on this board and I stayed on the board and I stayed with Richie and, and then everything happened with the hall. It was finished and we had a new mission and that was to bring my boys to New York so that they could see where Washington gave the first Purple Hearts. And these guys and gals now really are my kids. They're, they're mine. And I want them to have the best. They gave the best. And they deserve to come and heal. And this last group that we had. It was so amazing to see the healing that happened. Just them talking to each other. Just the places that we went. It was amazing. So with the funds that we get from these coins, we're going to keep doing this. And we're going to keep blessing all of these people who gave so much. And thank you. Start shopping. <laughs> thank you Edie, thank you so much and our our final unveiling and our final um our final honored guest is my friend stephanie keegan who i've appeared with so many times uh i've lost count but but i always know i'm doing something good when i'm when i'm at an event with stephanie keegan and that thing richie said is true she is if, if you're gonna go to if you're gonna go right if you're gonna go into something with with stephanie keegan you are better you better put your chin strap on because <laughs> she's not going to stop until it's done. And and like like Edie is is so committed and and Richie to service. Uh, in this case, in the memory of her son Daniel, uh, who came home 
as a from very distinguished um, service in our in in the military, but with some invisible wounds and and who paid a price for that. And in his memory, she has thrown herself into this project and so many other things to help our veterans. And um, and she is uh, and Andy are now Hidalgo uh, are now going to unveil our final design. Absolutely beautiful. Do you want to say something? Yeah. Come on. So most of the people here today are veterans, have served, understand what the meaning of service is. But I decided this morning, right before I left my house to come here, that I wanted to read something for those of you who haven't served to understand what going to work in a uniform looks like as opposed to going to your office. Every single person who joins the military and lists into the military has to give an oath. And I'm going to read that oath to you now with my son's name, where, I, where it, a name should be, because I stood there and watched him take his oath. This is it. I, Daniel Keegan, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. And so many people have sworn that oath, have made that promise, and have given so much in sacrifice to this country. You don't go to an office and make an oath like that every day. So to do this work, to get these coins, to honor our Purple Heart recipients of our military is something that I am so extraordinarily proud to have done. And we couldn't have done it without Sean, no matter what he says. So I am very, very grateful to you for allowing me to be included in this effort. and. You can call me a general if you want, but I'm really just an old civilian mom. <laughs> All right, well, that, that completes our presentation, but I should add, because I don't think I did, uh, for those of you who may not know, the way this works is that we mint these, uh, and when the expense to the taxpayer is um, recouped, which it will be in full, then the, the excess of that is what goes to the honor mission to support its important work. And so not only is this a really important way to like, acknowledge uh, those who have earned the Purple Heart and, and their service, but it also comes at no expense to the taxpayer and creates an extraordinary, extraordinary thing that others can collect and buy and put in there. Um, because I hadn't seen them before this moment, but clearly honoring um, you know, the father of the, the Purple Heart, George Washington, who has such an important connection to this district and to the area where it will be minted. And, and as I mentioned, originally called the Badge of Military Merit. Um, continuing with uh, this very moving design here of a combat nurse caring for a, a, a fallen soldier. Um, it's extraordinary. And, and finally, uh, here, obviously, um, maybe most somber of all, representing the, the ultimate sacrifice that so many give. Um, and that so few of us can, can even understand, let alone repay. So I can't wait for these to be, uh, to be done and in circulation. And I, and I'm led to believe, although, uh, it, it will be this year that it will be sometime in 2022. Uh, sorry, next year. I'm, I'm already in 2022 <laughs> for reasons none of you want to know. But, but, but uh, so thank you. Thank you for your long-term commitment from this. I'm sitting here thinking, like, thank goodness I got it reelected. We never would have got it done, right? We didn't know it was going to. Yes. <laughs> I never even made that argument out on the campaign. I said, you know, you got to give me a couple more terms because it's going to take, it's going to take six, eight years to get this done. But, but it feels great. It actually feels like yesterday. But, but, but I am so, I cannot wait. So one of these is on display in my office in Washington, and I'm going to hand them out to people who come to see me and bring one over to the president and all the stuff I get to do. You know, I go all around the world and I get these challenge coins from folks. You know, we don't have a challenge coin. Um, I swear an oath, but we don't have a challenge coin. Um, and some members do, but I've always I haven't really felt right about it because it's a thing that, uh, you know, it's a military 
uh, thing, and 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 I'm sure we should be getting in on it. But but this will be will be will be my challenge going, and we'll be able to hand hand these out um, to military officers and to foreign heads of state and all.